Hello all. I'm coming back on the channel after a long time and we are going to start with one more scan of paranasal sinuses. This is a plain CT scan of paranasal sinus and in coronal section. This gentleman presented with nose block and he had a previous surgery done, a septoplasty which was done. One more information is that he has been chronically using xylometazoline. So what happens? Let's evaluate the scan. This is a coronal scan and as you can see in the first instance the left side or the left nasal cavity it's blocked. Okay, The, the septum is hugging the lateral wall of the nose on the left side as compared to the right side. Okay, As we move further the block continues on the lower aspect. This itself shows that although a septoplasty was done, the patient still complains of nose block on the left side. This can be possible because of multiple reasons. The cartilage can fall back, back in the original place or at times we need to make sure that it doesn't fall back and what is the solution for that? We can put a splint inside the nose or we can put quilting sutures that helps it to stay. Going posteriorly, the septum is almost like in midline. Not a big difference, but still. We start seeing the frontal sinus. As we move further, we are going to look at everything from top to bottom. So frontal sinus, septations, and then we can see the nasal bones and spine. And the left nasal cavity is slightly lesser in space than the right. On CT scan, air looks black because it's of low density, as you can see, and bone looks appears to be white because of the high density. So we are going. We need to make sure that the black shadow of the nasal cavities are are not compromised and they are equal. So going posteriorly, now we start seeing the air cells. The orbit is seen. We can still see the septum. And now we start seeing the inferior turbinate. So coming from anterior to posterior, the left side is slightly compromised. Now we start seeing also the agar nasi, that is the air cell. And then there are a lot of ethmoids that start seeing. The maxillary sinus are seen here and this is the incisive canal where blood vessels and nerves pass and we can use injections in this area for nasopalatin block okay what you see over here is the nasolacrimal sac and a duct just follow this okay i'm going to scroll anterior and posterior see this can you see the whole segment coming flowing up and down that is a duct it starts from here and it opens here under the inferior turbinate okay this is the your osteomyotic complex we start seeing the middle turbinate the middle turbinate on the left side is smaller than the right side so possible there was a big spur over here which was impinging and did not allow the middle turbinate to come down or increase in size it blocked its development can see the opening of the infraorbital now and this is your tricky area where most common CSF leak happens and this is the area where we are worried about causing iatrogenic CSF leak as we move posteriorly we see I want to show you this this is the opening of the, you're right, anterior ethmoidal artery. So when this anterior ethmoidal artery, you can see over here as well, it is going into the skull base is quite nice, okay? And, but however, many times it comes like this, it's low laying, and that is the most common chance it can get injured in skull base surgeries. And what does it happen if we, you get, it gets injured? So initially the thought was, oh my God, the anterior ethmoidal artery is going to bleed what to do it will get retracted 
nothing if you see it and if it's bleeding you cauterize it we have got endoscopic forceps if not endoscopic forceps we can use bipolar handheld to use it make sure that there is a suction inside because it's an artery is going to bleed and there is hardly any space the other thing is make sure the coana is clean because the blood is going to trickle like this and it's going to go behind if the coana is full the blood will start accumulating in the nasal cavity and will struggle so that is the other thing these are the air cells ethmoidal and as i said the middle turbinate on the left side is slightly smaller in size and the ostomedial complex is congested is overcrowded that's the orbit we can see the muscle so this will be the extraconal part and this will be the intraconal part so new technique that has emerged is transorbital surgery or transnasal orbital surgeries there are two different concept okay transorbital surgery in which we go in the orbit from the orbit in transnasal orbital surgery we go transnasal in the orbit so when we are performing that kind of surgery what kind of lesions can we address clearly if we are going like this we can address this area comfortably rather than this okay so any lesion over here can be addressed nicely we don't need to worry about injuring the eye there's a nice pad of fat there is periorbita which we can strip and we can go inside the only one thing is when we are handling the middle rectus we have to inform the anesthetist because there can be change in the heart rate because of the reflex as we go posteriorly look at this middle turbinate okay it will change its direction it becomes horizontal can you see this it has become horizontal and the septum is fairly straight and you can see there are uh, the white shadow or the white line is not seen as a continuous line so in his previous septoplasty the bone might have been resected going posteriorly this is the ground lamella and then you see the posterior thomoid sorry so this is the ground lamella and then uh, you see the posterior thomoids it's quite interesting that the septum is pneumatized as we move further we enter the sphenoid now looking over here again the turbinates are quite bulky okay so throughout is left nasal cavity the space was less and the turbinates are bulky so in this kind of patient a turbinoplasty will be helpful can be surgical debride or even uh, you can use uh, coblation turbinoplasty that's the case there's a septum in bit in the sphenoid usually if the septum usually lands on the carotid and that's where it usually lands on the carotid his uh, sphenoid otherwise looks quite good uh, let's see uh, some other images if we can yeah we have got axial scan in axial section it is helpful to understand if whatever is in the maxillary sinus is it a mass or is it a fluid in case if it was fluid when the patient is lying down you can see the air fluid level because all the fluid will be settling down this can be a retentional cyst or polyp you can see whoever surgeon has done the first job has done pretty good except for the anterior bit and we cannot blame the person because it is already naturally taking turn in the anterior bit um then moving forwards that's your spinopalatine area and if you are having a jna this posterior 
maxillary wall will get bulged that's your nasal nasal lacrimal duct which is opening apart from that nothing specific thank you for listening let me know if you want to know about any further scans